If you've never made a portrait before, it can be overwhelming with anatomy and geometry and methods and, and techniques and equipment. You know, it can be daunting. Um, and many people ask me about this. I've never drawn portraits before. Where do I start? Or they'll have immediately, you know, um, I'd love to do it, but I'll never be able to do it. You know, that self-limiting stuff. So, so I thought I'd put something together to help people who've never made portraits before. And it's called Starting From Zero. Now, I don't do any of the anatomy, methods, um, equipment, measurement, grids, whatever. I don't do any of that. Um, and I, I, what I do is make portraits every day. Um, I've no obstacles to doing that um, apart from time <laughs> but but I just make portraits uh, mostly in charcoal because it's convenient if you like because it's practical you know um, it's a great way to make portraits it's a great way to do it if you're going to learn to make portraits do it with charcoal first off two reasons it's great for tonal manipulations very easy to make it look you know the tonal the tonal um, and variance it's very easy to do it whether you smudge it or you push it around or you do it with the charcoal itself depends on the on the paper and the and the type of charcoal you're using but it's very easy to do that and the other thing is that it's a lot better to draw with something big and fat than it is to do with something small and thin the reward the rewards with something big and fat are far greater uh, in all kinds of ways not just in the drawing um, but I do it as I, I do it every day so I want to share with you what it is that I do. So I, this course is a two-part course. The first part is to really get you to understand the approach to making portraits. It's actually the approach to any kind of drawing, but let's call it just for portraits. So the first part is to understand what makes a great portrait. And now, when you look at portraits, it's not just about what you like. It's, it's understanding that whatever that face, however that face is represented, that's another artist's view of a face. Um, there are times when you know people just like to copy a face, and they're not really what you consider portraits. They're just copies of a face, or copies of a photograph. So you can't really. You have to look at, for portraits like sort of Rembrandt self-portraits, or you know um, the Mona Lisa, or or any of those sort of anything of Sargent's portraits where there is genuine. Uh, creative intent in it you can see the soul of the artist in it as much as the but but when they're just copies of photographs then it's very difficult and if that's your bag then that's what you do you know but it's very difficult to assess those as a creative expression of a uh, another human um, but you need to look at the different kinds of portraits and absorb the fact that all these are all valid just as whatever you do will be as valid as the next one and getting into that mindset is really important because otherwise you'll always be trying to be like somebody else never want for that never look for inspiration to draw like somebody else or never try and copy somebody else just be your own your own artist be yourself um, the second stage is this drawing what you see thing in the uh, the introduction there are shapes and so we talk square circles triangles and when you set about drawing these things because they're known shapes you will tell yourself that's a square and you will draw the square without looking at the, at the reference any other time than seeing the first time when you saw it as a square which is wrong you need to be looking so getting out of the habit of telling yourself what to draw is really important now the next stage is about the relationships of things um, we all have the skill to judge distances varying in varying degrees depending on your, you know how you live but but essentially you'll need at some point in your life to judge a distance now that skill is the same skill you'd use in terms of obs observing a face how far the eyes are apart how far the chin is from the nose and the nose is from the forehead you'll be able to do all those things or you should be able to do all those things so in this next stage i talk about your your observational accuracy and then one after that is um, about what's important in a face or anything that you're drawing. There are certain things that define what it is that you're, you're drawing. Um, 
there are certain sort of elements. It's not always the same. If it's an eye, it's not always the same. If it's no, not always the same. There are certain parts of the face that make the face the face. And understanding what that is and looking for that one thing is the best way to, to draw faces. You can get into the detail later, but the thing will tell you about how simple shapes can be seen to be or represent an element of the face. So understanding that is a, is a great way to get into portraits because it will improve your accuracy and your speed and you know just the results will be far better. But the most important thing that brings all those things together is empathy. This, this what I call observational, um, uh, emotional observation. And being able to connect with another human and feel their mood is something we can all do. It's a very basic primal instinct. And um, letting that drive the way you respond to the, the subject is a great way to capture the essence of that subject. Because great portraits have to have the essence, the, the emotional element. They can't just be representations because they're never going to be great portraits. They're going to be good portraits, but never great. So those are the five steps. And then there's a, the, the second part of the, the course, if you like, is um, a, a, a bundle of lessons that relate to each one of those steps. So you can do the first one, get into the right place, and then do the lessons to, in order to understand what those first five steps mean. So anyway, that's the course, or the courses, and it's called Starting From Zero, and there's a link below to the free section at the first part of this course.